Hey guys, Kyle with Max Conversion. Today I've got a video on how to audit a Google Ads account, whether you're a Google Ads manager or you're a company running your own Google Ads. I'm gonna walk you step by step through what we do at Max Conversion and how we will audit an account and take a look at it and just kind of walk you through step by step. So with auditing an account, there's typically for this is for a service-based specific company. This isn't for e-commerce, this is for like insurance agents, plumbers, electricians, moving companies. Um, lawyers, any type of service that you offer, this is primarily what it's for because we're going to be covering phone calls and lead form submissions and information related to getting leads instead of e-commerce of selling those, selling those uh, through Google Ads. So there could be two main problems you're facing. There's a variety of problems, but usually they, you can sum them up into two categories, right? So the first call, the first problem is the quality of the lead. So if you're running into an issue where your quality of lead is not good, then um, I'm going to walk you through how to fix that and what you need to notice to know that it's quality of lead and what you should change. So first thing is quality of lead. Um, and I would say the second most common is the amount of leads, the lead cost, something related to the leads. You want more leads for the budget you put forth. And that could be so many different factors on why you might not be getting leads why your lead cost is high, uh, why your conversion rate is low, something related to that lead cost, lead just generating more for your budget, getting an ROI out of Google ads. I'm going to walk you through that as well. So the first thing I want to jump into is the quality of the lead. This is usually, you can usually find this at the keyword level, the keyword section in the search term report. And the most common thing that I see when somebody says, Hey, we're getting leads for a great price but the quality just isn't there, right? We're getting leads at, you know, X, Y, Z. And, you know, if they were just good and we closed one out of three, we'd be getting this ROI. But the issue is none of the leads are good. About every 10 leads we generate, one is good. And that's a serious issue because you're wasting a lot of money on Google ads. There's so many different targeting options and different things you can do within Google ads to improve the quality. Now, quality is not always going to be perfect. It's not perfect in any business. So you're not going to get 100% quality people looking for this exact service. They're buyers. They're ready to go. That's not what Google Ads is perfectly. That's not what anything is. Referrals aren't like that. Uh, cold email, people calling into you through SEO. It's never perfect clients that exactly you want, but you can improve the quality. So the first thing that I like to look at when I'm on an account and hear the issue of poor quality leads is I like to go into the campaign and we go into the campaign here and I like to look at the keywords first, right? So if we were auditing this campaign, we'd see broad match, broad match, but phrase match for most of it. Um, I believe all these are either phrase match or exact match besides the top, which look really good, right? So the first thing I would notice with this campaign is that in the ad groups, it's keyword focus, right? So carpet installation has carpet installation keywords, flooring installation has flooring installation keywords, and so on. So the keywords are relevant to the ad group. And so I check the ad out, carpet installation, and we see here that discount on carpet installs, carpet install on the headline here and here, here in the description, car carpet installation services in St. Louis. So I would say that you know, it's very relevant. Um, it's very relevant. There shouldn't be any quality issues with this specific ad group or this campaign really. Um, but typically where I see the quality issue is with broad match. So broad match can uh, get you showing up all over the place. So if we use this for an example, waterproof flooring contractor, you might start showing up for water restoration services, plumbing services, different, different keywords outside of what your primary services are right? Because Google might take this waterproof, they'll take flooring and they'll take contractors, and it'll be very loosely related to other things related to those keywords, right? So what I would do in this case is if you're saying, hey, all my quality is bad, is I would find the most relevant keywords for your industry and focus on those and don't run any broad match. Broad match, uh, broad match should rarely be run unless you are hitting a volume ceiling where you're spending as much money as you can and it's you're you're willing to spend some more on broad match potentially get some cheaper cost per click um then you can run it but i would say if you guys are on a kind of a tight budget whatever that means to you run phrase and exact those are going to be the best but also phrase match it can impact the quality as well so if we see here we've got flooring installation in the flooring installation ad group we've got a phrase match 
awesome. That's exactly what you want. The issue you might be running into, you might be saying, hey, Kyle, I've got these, I've got it all phrase match. And why, why, why am I still getting qual poor quality? And the issue probably lies in your negative keyword list. A negative keyword list is basically keywords that you don't want to show up for, right? So if we have the keyword Josh's, right? If we just add the negative keyword Josh's to this entire campaign or to a list, what that'll do is anytime somebody types in Josh's, flooring installation or Josh's waterproof flooring company or perfect anytime somebody types in the word Josh or Josh's in a, a, a the, the search bar on Google your ad will not show up right so with flooring installation being a phrase match and not having any negative keywords what might happen is that people can look for literally anything right they can look for for flooring installation prices flooring installation shop flooring installation uh, contractor flooring installation uh, in Washington State, you know, Josh's flooring installation, Rick's flooring installation, because it's phrase match. Phrase match just basically means that it needs to have these two words in the search in the search bar that a user types in, right? So that's a big thing that I see with a lot of new accounts that haven't been running very long is they've got the phrase match and the campaign set up pretty well but they don't have any negative keywords. So what I would recommend in this case, I would go to ChatGPT, say, hey, these are my services, create a list of negative keywords that is not relevant to this or that is closely relevant, but not what my service is. And you can get 100 to 500 keywords or even more if you keep on going related to, not related to what you offer, which is absolutely perfect. Uh, and I can actually show you guys the process that I would take in order to, uh, do this. So we go here. Um, we go to ChatGPT here, and what we would do is we type in flooring insulation company in St. Louis, and then we type in all our different keywords that we have here. So we've got you know, f let's just use three for example. We we'll use flooring repair, refinishing, and installation. And flooring refinishing. So we're running Google, we're running Google Ads, and we want to create a negative keyword list with over a hundred negative keywords that are closely related but not quality. And let's see what it does. So yeah, DIY free, cheap, all this is is very good, right? You don't want cheap, you don't want discount, you don't want free. Um, just different, these are related, so like overstock and clearance and closeout. With a flooring installation company, you might get people looking for a shop instead of the services, so this is absolutely perfect, having overstock and um, you know, recycling, junk, perfect. You don't want anyone looking for you know, pre-owned or junk or auctions, or so this is absolutely perfect. Um, we've got, uh, see we notice here that refurbished and refinishing, probably not keywords we wanna add, so go through the list. Um, so we've got 150 here right off the bat that you can add, make sure they're, make sure they're related and that they work for you. And so what I would do is I'd copy this list. You go ahead and copy this and you'd go back here. You'd go to negative keywords and you add it to, you can either create a list or just add it to the campaign and copy paste, hit save and you're good to go. Um, also some, a bonus tip is what I would add. I always like to add the who, what, where, when, why. Well, not who, but like who, what, when, when, who, or sorry, how, when, what, why. Um, because these are like how to install flooring or how to refurbish my flooring or when's the best time to refurbish my floor. How do I know when to refurbish my floor? These get rid of people in research mode, which you don't want. You want people looking for your service. So that is the first one, guys. If the quality of lead is not good, do that add the negative keywords make sure that you're using phrase or exact match and the quality of clicks is going to get better now um if you're getting clicks you should be getting leads but that's not always the case right so that goes into the second problem is you might be getting quality search terms which i should probably show you here here's how you see the search terms right you go to keywords search terms and some new accounts it's insights and reports and you click it and then you say where are uh the uh, you can see the insights and it'll show you the keywords in the search terms. So 
The search terms are important because you'll notice where or sorry, what keywords you're getting clicked on. If you're getting clicked on poor quality keywords, you'll know and you can add them as a negative right then and there. But let's jump into the second issue, which is the qual not the quality, the cost of lead and the amount of leads you're getting, right? So the first thing I like to look at is the budget. So if somebody's got a $20 a day budget and their average cost per click is $10, guys, you're just not gonna get leads most days. You might get one every once in a while, but you can't run a campaign off of $20 a day at a $10 cost per click. Even really a $5 cost per click, you can barely run it. Um, Cause in most cases, a 25 to 30% conversion rate is phenomenal, phenomenal, phenomenal. And that's kind of top of the line. Uh, you know, it can go, uh, it can go past that, but in most industries you are looking at a 25 to 30% conversion rate, maybe a little more sometime. However, the average conversion rate is, I believe it's 12% in Google ads. And so what that says is every 12, you know, every hundred people click on your ad, 12 people are going to convert. So if the average cost per click is $5 and you have a $20 a day budget, you need 12% of that. You, you need a higher budget. So that's the first thing I like to look at if somebody says, hey, we're not getting enough leads. Now, if your budget's $200 a day, you're spending a lot of money and you're getting clicks, you're not getting leads, what could be the issue? Well, the first issue is we like to go back and look at the search term report, right? So how is the quality of click? Is it, are people finding you for the right search terms? Are they clicking on relevant search terms? And what I always say, guys, is if you are getting clicks and you're not sure whether the search term is good or not you're like this could be it this could not be it what i say is alec pause that keyword remove that keyword temporarily allocate the budget to the keywords that you know that are going to perform and then you can always reintroduce it to the campaign whenever you're ready so that's what i like to say um so the search terms you know you could have a nice landing page but they're not converting because the search terms are not quality and one of the common ones I've seen is in the moving industry is people do moving company near me in a broad match. And what that does is they pop up for U-Haul rentals and truck rentals and box truck rentals and storage containers and pods and, you know, all those different services that are not related. And they ask, why am I not getting leads? Well, the keywords that the users are clicking on are not relevant to your ad or your landing page. So they land on your landing page or your website and they say, this isn't relevant at all. This is a moving company, not a U-Haul rental. And so they, they exit out of it. So that's really a big thing. Um, now let's say that you've got your campaign built out great. You've got the phrase exact. It's all it's all really, really well done. Um, let's say your ads are really relevant to what the keyword is. You've got um, you've got everything pretty set up. Your search terms are good, right? So if you're a flooring company, flooring installation services, flooring installation near me, you're getting clicks for those type of terms. Perfect, perfect. So what I like to say and what I see often is that whenever you're getting clicks for that and you're getting some leads, but your conversion rate isn't good, what that usually means is that there needs to be something there's, it's not in tune with your audience. There needs to be something on the back end, on the landing page end that you need to update uh, design wise, add some content, add some wording, make sure that it's running fast whenever they load it and click on the ad, doing things like that. So that's usually what it is, is, hey, I'm getting all these good clicks, landing page. You're gonna to wanna to look at the landing page design. And guys, if you're not a designer, what I recommend is either reach out to us and Max Conversion will design a landing page for you or go somewhere else and have somebody design the landing page for you. Landing page is a big, big portion of running Google Ads. And that's why Google Ads can be tricky sometimes because Google Ads isn't the trickiest part. It's optimizing the landing page so that it speaks to your audience and that you get a high conversion rate because the difference between a 12% conversion rate and a 30% conversion rate is humongous and the cost per lead difference on that is really big as well. So look at the landing page, um, redesign it, make sure it's, it's wording is relevant to what the keyword is. And a, a little tip here is, so if we have a carpet installation ad group, I'll give you an example here. So we've got carpet installation, it's all, the keywords are relevant, good. What I like to do is create a basic landing page and then what you can do is duplicate that landing page so it has the same structure design and change out the wording so that it's carpet installation in your area and then you have information related to carpet installation and do that for every single ad group like flooring installation floor flooring refinishing flooring repair and m just make it highly relevant to whatever they're searching for and relevance is really the key to google ads and every single step of it 
is the more relevant you are, the more likely it is to convert, the more likely Google is to show your ads, just everything is related to relevancy. So make it relevant, make the landing page relevant. Don't send it to your main website, send it to a landing page, a single page dedicated to that search term. And you should start seeing things turn around. Um, just something out there, make sure conversion tracking set up. If you don't know how to set up conversion tracking, we do have a video on how to set up phone call conversion tracking. Um, got one coming out for form submission conversion tracking, but make sure conversion tracking is set up before you enable the campaign. But that's primarily it guys. Uh, we're looking at those two issues. Um, there's other small issues that could arise, right? So um, we're getting calls outside of our target radius. Something like looking at the location is, you know, do you want to take a look at it and modify it, confirm it with the client or with yourself at what the location should be. Um, if it is location, you're going to want to look at the settings, make sure that the advanced settings for the location are turned on. So you've got location options. You want pe people in and regularly in, not people in or interested in. You want the people located there. Uh, that's a big thing. Um, and that is primarily it, guys, is, you know, we're looking at just all those little things. Now, if it's more of a, an advanced audit, we're looking at the data. There should be thousands of dollars spent. And so we're looking at the small details on what locations are performing the best, you know, looking at the cities, looking at the ad schedule, what hours and days do they perform the best? We're looking at what devices perform the best, right? So if mobile phones are performing better than computer, we're... You know, we're going to turn off computer or at least add this bid adjustment of negative, you know, negative 50 or 75 or 25, whatever uh, we think it should be at. And we're looking at the audiences. Having them on observation mode is always very important. Um, so if you have a bunch of audiences, you're able to view who's performing the best. And it doesn't impact the targeting of the campaign, but it can help with uh, targeting later on down the road. Um, another thing is we're looking at remarketing. So if this company has a lot of clicks are spending a lot of money. They're doing billboards. They're doing, they're doing SEO. They're doing everything. We'll look at remarketing. Remarketing is very powerful for the brands that are big, that are well not big, but the brands that are very locally well known. Remarketing is very powerful. Remarketing is great for everybody, but it's most effective for companies that are doing multiple channels of marketing. It works just the best. Um, and so guys, that's primarily what we're looking at, making sure that, you know, just the, the general Google ads campaign is set up correctly, having, um, you know, call outs and structured snippets and uh, the call extension, the location extension, uh, promotion, if that makes sense, site link extension, all those we're making sure that they're, they're set up properly. And that's primarily it guys. Uh, we'll also look at the landing page, you know, what's going on there. What's the dot design look like? Are they running to the website or they're running it to the landing page? We've got a full checklist on what, what is, what the, what the company's doing with their Google ads and rates it on a scale of 1% to hundred percent. So, uh, just following best practices, doing different things, different targeting, but that's a broad overview of how we audit a campaign, just checking out what they're doing. Um, seeing any anything that we think that we can pr perform better on. Uh, and we typically provide that before we start working with the company. Because if we go in there blind, uh, we if you go in there blind, it's it's you're going to take on an account and uh, you might you might lose it really quick. If you're a Google Ads manager, um, you might lose it really quick because you didn't really fully understand what, what the issues were in the account. And you took on an account that you thought you could perform better, but you're really you really can't. And that's a really big thing is making sure that you look at the account before. So I hope this video helps you guys audit your own account or a client's account. Auditing is very, very important in order to improve performance. There's so many different things you can do, uh, even advanced on top of what I already showed you. But if you guys do have any questions about something specific going on in your own campaign, comment it down below uh, and make sure that if you like this video, hit that like and subscribe button it really helps us out to keep creating these helpful videos for you guys. So appreciate you watching. Thank you.